tonight, a mysterious shooting in the suburbs. A woman was shot in the head in front of her house. No suspect, no motive so far. Both neighbors and investigators are asking themselves the same question, why? Why this neighborhood? Why this house? Why would anyone want to kill Mary Jo but a few go? The first time we heard that a woman had been shot on the doorstep of her suburban house, I think we all thought that it was a home invasion. It happened yesterday in broad daylight. There were no screams, no evidence of a struggle. The next day in the paper, Newsday, The Post, you know, a woman gets shot in Massapequa. It was all over the place on the news. Tonight, the wife, Mary Jo Buttafuoco, is in critical condition at Nassau County Medical Center. This kind of thing doesn't happen to people like her. She, she's, uh, she's the all-American mother and woman and wife. The detectives didn't know what it was. The neighbors didn't know what it was. Reporters had no idea what it was about. Certainly a mystery at this point. Even before people knew who the perpetrator was, it was a big story. I was in the hospital, and I don't know how it happened or when it happened, but somehow a picture of her was brought to me. They said, that's her. That kid did it. She told me her name was Anne Marie, and they're saying, well, her name is Amy Fisher. And Joe said, she's a customer. I know her father. I've done work on her car. Joe insists that he only knew that it was Amy. The only reason he knew it is because of the T-shirt. Who could have imagined that a 17-year-old high school student would be the person who shot Mary Jo Buttafuoco. So what happened was the police brought Joey home. And there were no cell phones back in the day, and they wanted Joey to call Amy Fisher from our home phone. Their idea was to lure her out of the house. What cops will tend to do is they will try to get the person they want to arrest away from their comfort zone put them into the location where the cops have the control. I said, what do you want me to say to her? And they told me, have you seen the news? My wife's been shot, and I want to talk to you. They told Joe to say, meet me somewhere. Come out and meet me. I want to talk to you. After they got off the phone, she got in her car, and she drove off. And within just a few minutes, the police sirens pulled her over, and that was it. She was arrested. The police were so excited because they got her. And they had a live witness, and thank God Mary Jo lived. They brought her into police headquarters at Nassau County. She's 17 years old. They have taken her in for questioning. She's denying, she's lying, she's doing whatever she did. She sat there for 12 hours. They had her in police custody. So at 9 a.m. the next morning, Elliot and Rose Fisher are sitting at the kitchen table frantic because their daughter's been out all night and they have no idea where she was. And the phone rang, and it was a detective saying, better get a lawyer, your daughter's been arrested. Did you do it? And then there was the perp walk. And this little kid is walked in handcuffs to a police car with long hair almost down to her waist and cut off jeans and a t-shirt People were astounded. Who is this kid? Were you in love with her husband? The whole story, I think, shifted at that moment. It was the perp walk of Amy Fisher that launched that story. And then we get one of the greatest news headlines ever written. Amy Fisher is dubbed the Long Island Lolita. She is accused of an affair with a married man more than twice her age. She is in jail on charges of trying to kill his wife, and she is only 17 years old. But who is Amy Fisher? Amy Fisher was born August 21st, 1974. She was the only child of Rose and Elliot Fisher. Her mother was Catholic, her father was Jewish. Her parents were middle class. They had a nice home in Merrick, Long Island. Amy Elizabeth Fisher was known by teachers and administrators as a student with average course load and below average grades. She had a beeper back then before cell phones. And once she was 16, they got her a car. So she was really indulged. Elliot Fisher was Amy Fisher's father. He came into our shop first. And then he shortly brought his daughter Amy in. Elliot would say to me, if uh, Amy ever has an accident, just take care of her, send me the bill. And that's what we did. So she started smashing mirrors and hitting the curbs, and she did smash that car a lot. 
And that was the very first time she met Joey. There was sort of banter, Joey's got a big personality. And at that point, that's when the relationship started to build. According to Amy, the first time she had a sexual relationship with Joey was about a month before she turned 17. They went back to her house, he drove her home, and had sex with her in her childhood bedroom. With Amy coming in all of the time, that relationship went where it went, and it was over real fast, but with uh, bad results. When they begin their romantic involvement, she's 16 years old, he's 36 at the time. She was still considered a minor under New York state law. My relationship with Amy was inappropriate, and that's as far as I'm gonna go with that. She was crazy about him, but you're talking about a 16-year-old girl who was infatuated by a guy who was flashy. Had a lot of money to spend, took her to nice places. You could say she was naive, but you also have to remember that she was only 16 years old, and once she met Joey, everything really spiraled downhill quickly. I remember getting home from the hospital. Every news van in the United States of America came and parked in front of my house, on the side of the house. Reporters coming out of the woodwork. The privacy was gone. It was absolutely gone, and that was rough. I'm alive, but I've lost a lot of weight. I weighed like 89 pounds. I could hardly walk because my equilibrium was thrown off. She feels lousy. I thank God she feels anything, OK? At nine years old, my mom is my superhero. And to see her laid out like this, half of her face is drooping, and half of her head is shaved. You know, my big, strong, awesome mom is now frail and swollen. It was insanity. You just want things to be normal and comfortable, and the media circus just went wild. There's nothing you want to say? Not at this time. OK, will there be something in the future? I imagine there will be. The story was an attempted murder case for like two or three days. And then after that, the motive for the shooting took over that story. She's charged with shooting her lover's wife. A Long Island teenager drawn to an older man a married man. Police say it was a secret affair that went from passion to rage. It wasn't about the shooting anymore. It was about Amy and Joey. Was she an innocent led astray by an older man, or was she the Long Island Lolita? Did you know she was obsessed with you? No. You never did anything to lead her on? Absolutely not. Never. Joey is a fabulous liar. I did not realize that then. I didn't realize how much he manipulated me and how much he lied to me, but he did. She's the daughter of a customer, Mr. Fisher's daughter. And that's all she is to me. Once she got arrested, she claimed it was an accident. Amy's version of events was that we struggled and fought over the gun, and the gun accidentally went off. There were only two people on that step that day, me and her. She was there to kill me. Detectives learned that Amy Fisher had recruited a cast of characters to work with her. Two men have come forward tonight saying Amy Fisher approached them months ago, begging them to help her kill Mary Jo Buttafuoco. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.